Thank you for choosing to listen to this message by our pastor, Brother Mike Beachy. Let us join now with the saints of God with open hearts and minds into a service already in progress. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. is wonderful this morning. He was wonderful yesterday, and you know what? He's going to be wonderful tomorrow, too. Amen. Never fails. Jesus never fails. Amen. All right. Let's see. Brother Roger, if you wouldn't mind, send that basket down and uh, give everybody an opportunity to share with the Lord. And just remember the different uh, things going on. There's always uh, financial need to pay the bills and buy paper and uh, postage. And his brother Richard can testify, it takes a lot of finance to send stuff overseas. Sometimes it costs more to mail it than it does to produce it. In fact, most cases it does. So uh, keep these things in mind, and it's uh, just an opportunity to win a soul. Opportunity to win a soul. That was Brother George's uh, heart's desire, and uh, the burning flame within his heart was to win souls. And uh, he tried to pass it on to everybody he uh, spoke to and preached to was to be busy about the Father's business. You know, keep the Lord Jesus first and foremost in your mind and His kingdom and what can I do for the Lord? What can I do for the Lord? I think it was John Kennedy. He said, don't think about what my country can do for me, but what can I do for my country? And we should think that same way toward the Lord Jesus. You know, don't be so concerned. He's going to do stuff for us, but don't be concerned of what we can get him to do for us, but what can I do for the Lord? You know, that should be our heart's desire also. Amen. You love the Lord this morning? Amen. Amen. You're glad to be a child of God? Amen. As Brother Roger prayed, it's such a great opportunity to come to the house of God. And you know, to be partakers of the truth. Now, you know, this church is on about every corner, about like there are gas stations. But you know, not all of them are dispensing truth. You know, you can uh, hear them read the Bible and you can hear them tell Bible stories, but to uh, to really preach something and say something that penetrates that innermost being, that strengthens that life within you. Now, that's, that's the important thing. That's why it's so necessary and so important to be partakers of truth. Truth never changes. You know, the styles change and fashions change and people change, but, you know, the truth never changes. And you get grounded and, grounded and rooted in that truth, you know what? You can look forward to eternal life. Amen. All right. Does anybody have a testimony before we uh, change the order of service? Anybody have a testimony? Sister Reba? I'd like to thank the Lord. I love him, and I'm glad that he loves me. And, you know, like you was talking about that Sunday, that might be a bump in the road. But, you know, that could be a soul that somebody's got to reach. And I, and I look at it like that's that. Right. Like, God, thank you for these things that come into my life because that's somebody that I can reach to so that I can reach. Amen. And also, you know, that we are to put on the Lord Jesus Christ, put on that garment of righteousness, that bride. And what it is is without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. And sometimes, even though in our minds before we iron something, we see it as smooth and without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. But sometimes there's a little wrinkle, there's a little dot or something, and that's something of ourselves that's showing. And God has a way that He can iron that out so that we can put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And we can have that garment yeah, without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. And I just thank the Lord for it. I just consider this another spot right on me. And God's getting it out. He's going to allow me to be able to witness to somebody. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Knowing all things work together. Yeah. Not just most of them or some of them, but all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. Brother Roger? Just while praying the Lord and dealing with about something, he's watching Caleb go up there. 
how she was, you know, giving her loan just so delighted to get up there put the money in there. And the Lord spoke to me like that for a praise is, you know, he delighted in healing her. He delighted to bless her. That's right. It's our life is determined how much he can heal her. How much he can deliver her. It's our life determined what he can do. How much movement he can do. That's right. Amen. I believe the Lord delights in His children, delights in His people. Amen. All right, anybody else? Uh, you know, Brother Richard's uh, Donald's funeral yesterday, those of you that came, it was uh, a little different than uh, some funerals, but uh, I tell you, I really, uh, I really got something out of the different ones that spoke and sung and different ones that uh, partook of the service, just said such wonderful things, and, and it was, uh, I'm telling you, People that, that was not saved, I don't know how they got out there without uh, without getting saved. I tell you, there was uh, just some real wonderful things said, and uh, they was reaching out to the to Brother Richard's family. You know, they was reaching out to his family, and uh, you know, and uh, I believe the sum total. I believe Brother Richard tried to get things straight in his uh, in his life, and uh, you know, he was a very humble man, very very humble person, big old big old giant of a man, but he was so meek and humble. And I believe the Lord was considered of that. I know Brother George used to uh, talk about how the Lord spoke to Brother Richard in dreams so many times and would give him just such outstanding dreams. And, uh, you know, the Lord's not forgetful of these things. And uh, But he was, uh, you know, all these things was pointing to, uh, you know, what are you going to do? You know, what, what, is, what is your funeral? What are you preaching your funeral every day? You know, what is your life? Uh, 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 lead, leading toward, you know, we're all uh, the Lord uh, tarries, and uh, we are not translated. We're all going to be laying out there one day, and people are going to be saying either good things or bad things. So our life needs to be uh, a testimony, you know, pointing to that that very day right there. All right, uh, one of the sisters have a song this morning. Uh, Sister Michelle, go ahead. Uh, Won't the yeah. sisters, sisters, just come on up and uh, y'all get ready to sing. Well, this is kind of a confession slash testimony. <laughs> but um, it's been a few weeks ago. You know, sometimes I go clean the house with Mama, and and I made a certain amount of money, and I was sitting in church, and, and the Lord laid on my heart to put so much money, you know, towards a certain thing. And and I was like, you know, well, Kenny, he gives the offering. You know? <laughs> and like, you know, so I went off and... <laughs> And I started, you know, I went and got a few things. Well, the first thing broke, and the next thing, <laughs> anyway, the next thing that, you know, I got a Bible and the cover come off the front. <laughs> so the next time the Lord gave me another, you know, cleaning the house with Mom, and I said, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that money in the offering. <laughs> and I did, and I got my money back on what broke, and, and I got another Bible, and they don't usually exchange books, you know, and. I just, you know, and I was like, how in the world I got so much money left, you know, and it's just, it was just a lesson to me, and I just thank God for them kind of lessons, you know, and, you know, I just felt good in my heart, I didn't feel like I was disobedient, you know, <laughs> so I just thank the Lord for
there's something about that name. Through that name, we have salvation. We have an entrance, oh Lord. God, we come before you this morning. We gather here in that wonderful name because you said if we come together and if there's just two or three, then Lord, you would be in the midst. Oh, and I believe somebody came in that name of Jesus this morning. Somebody came in that identity of the precious Son of God. Lord, we feel your presence here this morning. We just ask that you would speak to our hearts, uplift our spirits, enlighten our minds, dear God. May we go beyond the veil. Lead us from the throne of grace. Lord, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. You alone are worthy. You alone have the words of eternal life. We give you thanks in that precious, holy name of Jesus. We do thank you. Can we just sing that one more time? about that name. That wonderful name, Jesus. Amen. Good morning, Brother Eddie. Amen. Something about that name. Something about that name. I was listening to things being said this morning, just beautiful. I thought that little track was real fitting and Talking about, had some wonderful fellowship yesterday and just talking about the wonderful things of the Lord. Amen. And uh, it just uh, sometimes we just need to stir that pure mind just a little bit. Amen. There is a, such a thing as a pure mind. And it's so wonderful. It belongs to the wonderful mind of Christ. And it's such a wonderful thing. And, uh, we're just so glad to be here with you this morning. Uh, just encouraged in the Lord. And as Brother Jim said, the uh, service went very well yesterday. And, and uh, everything was real well. And we thank the Lord for that. So wonderful is talking about yesterday. Uh, Talking about bumps in the road, you know. I was talking about how that faith, you know, a lot of times we misconstrue. Sometimes we misunderstand. and We think that having faith is 
carrying a, a magic wand or a genie around with us that any problem comes up, we just, and it's gone. You know, I believe that the faith that God has given to his people, he said that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers them out of them all. And he gives us a steadfastness. He gives us a faith. He keeps us unmovable that it doesn't matter about the storm. Amen. We just stand firm. Amen. Yeah, I love this. Talking about that portrait of the portrayal of, of peace and how that, what was it, the little bird was just singing in the midst of the storm. You know, and that's the way it is. God, he just comes and, you know, he speaks peace, be still. You know, a lot of times we're expecting the waves just to calm down. But you know what? He can speak a peace, and there's just something on the inside that just settles down. And the storms, the waves, they just may arose another 10 feet, but it don't even matter. It don't even matter. There's a peace and a calm that comes on the inside that you know that it don't matter what happens or what comes or what goes. God's bringing me through this one. Amen. I'm in that ark of safety. I'm in the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. And it is so wonderful to know that God has given us something that, you know, it, it's not, it don't eradicate our obstacles. It just gives us the strength to overcome them. Amen. I love that song Mandy sings sometimes. God, don't move the mountain. Just give me strength to climb. Amen. And if we're going to build our spiritual muscles, sometimes we have to climb. You know, sometimes we have to exercise a little bit sometimes we have to press against the opposition just a little bit but if we don't have any oppositions then how will we know you know if you're going through school and you never get a test then how are you going to know if you're learning anything you know so this is the way God finds out if we're learning anything amen I thank God for his his love and his mercy because it endures continually amen it, it endures forever and so it's a wonderful thing and uh, you know, it's so beautiful. And we're talking about a little bit about the process. Uh, you know, how, how many knows we're in a process? Uh, listening as we're coming in. And I uh, appreciate them singing those songs. There was a beautiful song on the radio. And it was saying that, that, that where the Spirit of God is, uh, there's peace. And there's power. And there's, uh, there's I, I don't know all of the song. I don't know if I've ever heard it. But it's just a beautiful song. And I was thinking about that because, you know, we come into the sanctuary a lot of times and, and maybe we get into, you can't help it, we, we're just prone to routine or things and, and we do certain things and that's okay. But the main thing is that we come in here with a tune in our heart, that we're tuning up our heart and we're getting into a, a spirit of worship and into the spirit of Christ because there's not a whole lot that the preacher can do for you, but there's not anything that Christ can't do. Amen? And we can get beyond the veil, and we can, we're can we asking for the presence of God to come in and just saturate the house and to fill the house. And when he does, he begins to meet the needs. He'll supply the needs. He'll take care of your needs before the preacher ever gets up here. Amen? He'll just begin to touch your heart and your souls and your lives, and he'll just begin to mend and heal and, and do things before the Word ever gets here. Amen. And then the word comes forth and it just like, it just seals it right on in. Amen. And so it's so wonderful. And when we come into the house of God, we come in with, as, as Brother Jim mentioned about what's on the doors, you know, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Come in, just sit, pushing everything else aside and just, just giving God this few moments of time, you know. Uh, you know, we've, we've gotten so electronically uh, connected, you know, that we, we, we can't even walk out the house. My goodness gracious, if we think we left the cell phone, my Lord, if the world's done come to an end, you know. I mean, we can't even go to town. You know, somebody, I, I know somebody important's going to call. I mean, you know, who knows? The president might be trying to get in touch with me, you know. And, but, you know, we can just set everything aside. Just leave all those connections, you know, because we just need to come and bask in the presence of God. And I, I think that is a tool that, I ain't saying the, the cell phone's bad. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that the devil gets us all busy, 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 busy. And we don't have any time for God. Amen. We don't have time for God. And there's so many things coming in and, and bombarding our minds. I mean, we've got the radio. We've got the television. We've got the newspapers. We've got the Internet. We've got so many things. And our minds just constantly going, just going, going, going. And we never really stop for that there. Be still and know that I'm God. That there quiet moment with the Lord Jesus Christ. And we need that. And this is, this is why we come to church. It's why we come together. It's so we can 
kind of put some of them things aside, you know, and, and just say, you know, hey, you know, this is that time for Jesus. You know, we're coming in here, we're going to spend, I was thinking about that song, I, I heard it played again, and it's been such a hit, and I can only imagine, and I was thinking about that the other day, and I was listening as to the words, you know, and saying, you know, will I dance, or will I pray, and, and you know, you think, what will I do? I mean, you really get to think and say, well, what do you do? I, I know that. We come into this presence, but I, I believe one day I'm going to look on his face. Amen. Hey, man, I, I believe I'm going to see his face. And to think about that there and to think about the, the awe, the, the, the holiness, the, the, the atmosphere and the presence, you know, without the interference. You know what I'm saying? Uh, thinking... Ah, God, you know, what will I do? I, I can only imagine. I, I don't even know if I can imagine what I would do. I mean, it's, it's so odd. I, I mean, just an angel. It, some of the uh, men of God have been, people have experienced the presence of an angel and they just are dead. They're just as dead. They can't move. They can't speak. I mean, you, you hardly know if you're even breathing, you know? And to think that that's just an angel of the Lord standing in his presence like that. Oh, my. I tell you what, it's, it's awesome. I mean, it's an awesome thought. But I look forward to it. Amen. I look forward to it. Boy, and that'll make you think, man, just to think that you stand there and them piercing eyes and he's just looking at you and looking through you and everything. It's like, whew, Lord, let me make sure I got everything under the blood. Let me make sure, you know, they was talking about Brother Richard. said he had just a few, not too long ago in service, he turned around and said, look, if I've done anybody wrong, please forgive me. You want to make things right. You know, that's what we have to do. We just have to make things right. And we can, we can do that through Jesus. We can do that through Jesus. So it's, it's awesome. Uh, awesome God we serve. We was talking about the creation. And, oh, my, we was talking about quite a few things yesterday. And, and uh, uh, you know, and, and, and why God did this. Why did he even begin to process and do these things? You know, it wasn't for him. It wasn't for him. It was for us. But there was a place God wanted to take man. See, he wanted more than just an angel. He, he, God, wanted to be, God wanted to be more than just the object of worship. He wanted to be more than that. And I was talking about that there, how did, how did he, he, he came and his final goal for man, what he wanted. You know, he made Adam the God of this world. You know, he made him ruler over everything. He, he named the beast. He put him over the garden. He put him over everything. And, and we believe that when the Lord came, he restored those things back, took it back to its rightful place. But we think about that, and we think so many times the devil wants to make us think, you know, if God loved us or if God was love and, and all these things, these here wouldn't happen in this Man has brought all these things on himself. Man, but the love of God, how, how great was his love? God loved, his love was so great. It was so great that he didn't want to remain God. He didn't want to be in that place by himself. He was willing to share God. So great, his love is so great that he wanted to share that love. He wanted to share that love. And I tell you what, you begin to just, you, you can't even comprehend it in this little old feeble mind that we have. This, this little uh, conductive nerves and things just can't contain God. Amen. But what little bit God does bring. See, so what's it do? It's changing us. That's what it's all about. Being changed into that glorious image. We were talking about some things the other night. We got in a few things Wednesday and then Friday night. We picked up on a little bit of the, the Bible session there of, of, of I Am. And I mentioned something there, and I, I want to go over here to Hebrews chapter 1. And let's just read a little bit and just open our hearts this morning and see if the Lord would speak to us. I... Uh, Heard someone talking the other day concerning 
teachers. And it was talking about teachers, you know. And, uh, you know, everybody that's in the school and uh, is standing up there behind the desk and drawing a salary, all of them's not teachers. There's some that are there, they have a position and they're making a living. But then there are teachers. And they was talking about how the teachers can just, it's like they can, they have a gift to unlock what's on the inside. To unlock that potential of that child. And that they can just be all that they can be. To be the best at what they are. And there's, there's, there's teachers that can do that. And I, I was thinking about that and I thought, Lord, God, help me to be a, a good teacher, a, a good instructor. I, I would love to be able to be uh, uh, one that could just help people reach on the inside and just unlock their potential. Amen. Because how many know we got some potential? Amen. Do we have Christ on the inside? Well, I tell you what, you got so much potential, we, we can't even comprehend it. Amen. It's, it's what they say, it's out of this world. It really is. It really is. That's the beautiful part about this thing. You know, it really is out of this world. That's the whole idea, ain't it? Amen. Idea. So it's such a wonderful thing. And I, so I said, Lord, you know, if you could just use this to, Paul said, I'm a helper of your faith. And so Lord, if you could just use this to reach in there and, and help people unlock that potential that's on the inside. What a wonderful thing. Wonderful, wonderful. We'll just begin at verse 1, chapter 1, the book of Hebrews. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Who being the brightness of his glory and the expressed image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Well, I'll tell you what, this is, this is a, a, a pretty powerful person here. I mean, God has, has done something here now. And said, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son, he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness in the scepter of thy kingdom. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest. They all shall wax old as doth a garment, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them 
who shall be heirs of salvation. Uh, this is a wonderful thing here as we look at this. And he makes a difference here as the angels, the Son of God. He said he's lifted him above that. I mean, he knows that man is a little lower than the angels. But here we're talking about someone that is higher than the angels. And so this is a wonderful thing. And then I want to look at a verse of Scripture that I, someone quoted yesterday and we was looking at because sometimes you read things and you, you, you kind of overlook them a little bit. In Matthew chapter 16, In verse 13, Jesus, he said, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? That kind of stood out just a little bit to me yesterday as we read that. Who do men say that I, the Son of Man. I mean, know that there were several offices that Jesus fulfilled. He was the Son of Man. He was the Son of David. But he was also the Son of God. Amen? And as we see that, I, I said, wait a minute. Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, I think sometimes we will put a lot of emphasis on the fallen man. But I believe there was a reason that Jesus stood there and he told Nicodemus, he said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. He said, Nicodemus is the son of man. He said, the one that came down from heaven, the one that's going back to heaven, and Nicodemus, the one that is in heaven. There was something about it there that he was transcending some worlds. And he was standing there and Nicodemus thought he was looking at him. Nicodemus thought he was looking at Jesus and he was seeing that outer shell. He seen that bodily part. He was looking at that son of man, but there was something else there. Oh, he came as the Son of Man. He came so that he could fill our infirmities. He came in this bodily temple. He came as the Son of David, as the lineage to sit on the throne. But he also came as the Son of God. Amen. And it said the image. The place said the express image. The fullness of the Godhead. Who do men say? Then we've got to get to the point. As we say, there's been the process. There's been the tutoring. There's been the govern governors there. There's been the teachers. There's been those, the instructors that have been there to teach us. To teach us what? Well, when you're raising a child up, you know, and, and, and you're wealthy and you own industry and business and, and things, you... There's certain places, you know, you want to train your child. And if you have a son, you, you want to train this child because at some point in time in life, you, you know that you're going to get older and you're going to end up having to pass this business on. And so you, won't, you don't want just anybody teaching this child. You don't want just anything teaching you. There are certain instructions you want this child to have. Especially as he begins to get older, then you, you're making sure it's getting the right degrees and, and, and all these things and you're getting searching out the best teachers and you, you want to make sure he's, he's well fitted for the job. I believe God has been preparing a people. Amen. I, I believe he's been preparing a people and, and I, I believe he's given us the best job of all. Amen. Some, some said 
you know, they went over there to the feast and the wedding supper and, and they was there and they had their wine and they was doing all these things and, and they come to Jesus and said, you know, we're out of wine. You know, so what, you know? But he tell his mother, what am I doing to do with you? You know, what, you know, what are you trying to do here? He knew what she was doing. She knew who he was. They might have not knew who he was, but she knew. She had a good idea. He said, get six water pots. Fill them up. And then pour some out. Oh, I'm glad that he don't just leave us half empty. I I believe he wants to fill us all the way to the top. Amen. Filled up and overflowing. That's why he told the woman at the well, if you'll drink of this water, oh my, it'll change you. Why? Because it becomes spirit. Amen. It, it becomes spirit. It becomes spirit in life. You'll have wells of living water flowing from within. So they take it. What they say? Well, man, you saved the best wine to last. I believe he's got the best wine to last. Amen. I believe we're living in the best time of all. Oh, it might not look right, like, look like it. We may look around and all the problems and the troubles and the woes and we think, my goodness, this is the worst time of all. Now, the little thing I was hearing a while ago was talking about the restoration. Talking about some watching them as they restoring cars and things. Talking about how that, that's the way God does us. Sometimes these little bumps in the road is part of the restoration. You know? He sees, you know, he might see some rust under there that we didn't see. We might have missed. Just clean it up. Beautifying us. But one day, he's going to have a showroom. Amen. He's going to put on a display. So we said, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Then, as we go a little further they say, well, some say that you're John the Baptist. And some say Elias and others, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. And Simon Peter answered and said, in 15, he said, and he said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? He wanted to see if they was getting anywhere. Here was one of their tests. He began to ask them questions. See, who do you say that I am? Who do they say I, the Son of Man, am? Peter said, Thou art the Christ. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. Flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father. I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church. God, who at sundry times in divers place spoke by the voice of the prophets. Now, he's speaking from his son. What was that? He's speaking directly because that was the mouthpiece of God. And it says, in the beginning, God created. What did he do? And he said, let there be, and there was. Let there be. And now he is speaking from that same mouthpiece because it said that he made all things by him and through him, and without him was nothing made that was made. That was that voice of that Son of God. That was the mouthpiece of God speaking. And now he's saying that same mouthpiece is speaking to us today. And we've got to understand it, that their words are powerful, especially when he's speaking. Here he is. That word. And then sometimes... We go on and look, and he's talking about the difference between him and the angels. But what does that have to do with you and me? 
That's why I go back over there. And he says, Nicodemus, you must be born again. Why? The law and the prophets were Uncle John, but since this time, the kingdom's been preached. The kingdom, the kingdom of what? The kingdom of heaven has been preached. Why is he preaching the kingdom of heaven? Because he said that the kingdom of heaven is nigh thee. It's here. It's, it's a close. You can reach out and touch it. You can partake of it. And to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become what? The sons of God. Now, it changes places. Now, it changes roles. Now, we're not as men. But he said in heaven, we'd be as the angels. Now, we can become ministering spirits. Now, our words. Why? Because it's no longer you speaking, but it's Christ. Now your words can have an effect. Now you can begin to speak and say, peace be still. Amen? He said, I've given you power over all the power of the enemy. What is the enemy? He's a fallen angel. He's a fallen angel. There's demon powers. There's spirits. But you know what? You've got power over them. You've got power over them. But see, are we exercising that? Are we walking in that? I say, we think sometimes faith means we're going to just speak all of our problems out of existence. We have a financial problem. We have a health problem. We have... No. But it gives us the faith, the Word of God, to walk through these situations. Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Who do men say that you are? See, we're not just mere men anymore. Not just mere women anymore. We're talking about sons and daughters of God. We're talking about those that, as we see here, the Lord Jesus, sometimes we we repeat these things, we say these things, but it's got to become a reality in our life. And it has to go through this intellectual veil. We've got an intellect, and it's a veil, and and when this word comes to print, when it comes and you you hear it, it goes through an intellectual veil. But if it can drop on into the heart, with the heart man believes unto righteousness. I'm not talking about this thumping thing right here. There's something more in there. This here body's just a shell. This ain't me. This ain't me that you're looking at. I, I, I'm just living in this shell. There's something else in here. Amen. And it's, it's bone of his bone and it's flesh of his flesh. We become one with Christ. He said, Lord, Father, make them one even as we're one. Well, we become one in spirit. See, and what happens? He said, in the last days, I raise up saviors. What happens? We're walking in that faith. What is it? It's the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. His faith was that I can go down here. I can robe myself in flesh. I can become the son of man. And I can redeem back that which was taken. Which was lost in the garden. At the fall. I can take it back. There we go. Why did he allow it to start with? Why, why did he even worry about all that? Because he didn't want a bunch of robots. Oh, he could create all the angels he wanted to. Say, hey, you know, make sure there's someone here around the throne 24-7 worshiping me. God wasn't on an ego trip. Oh, but he wanted something more than that. Wanted something more. He said, the begotten, the first begotten son. First begotten into the world. By him were all things made. But I also like that scripture that says 
that he was the firstborn among many brethren. Firstborn among many brethren. That's why I said, Nicodemus, you got to be born again. But see, what do we do? We end up emphasis on the flesh. We need to put the emphasis on the spirit. And the flesh will have to conform. See, we talk about faith. And it says that to every man is given a measure of faith. And some men will take this measure of faith. And they will build empires. In the natural. They will use that and, and they will do very well. But we can also turn that faith in a direction. We can turn that faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. And we can put our faith, and that will be our link. You're talking about links this morning. That will be our link. And we can link on to the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now we're walking by faith and not by sight. Talking about how to believe that there's ministries and they had to do with certain things. Talking about Brother Branham, Brother Pike, and talk about these things and don't having to do with the body and the spirit. These things coming to get, bringing these things together. I'm going to say they believed it. Brother Pike had brought these things together, and I said, well, wait just a minute. What about something that me and you have to do? I said, I believe we've been equipped. I believe we've been given the tools. I believe that there has been a message that has been preached. That the revelation of Christ has come forth. But I believe that he has given it to us. And that it is up to us to bring that their formulation together as to to bring the spirit back to the body. I believe it is up to us in this generation to say, even so come Lord Jesus. It is up to us. We can't depend on what they did. We, we can take what they did. We can build on what they did and what they brought. But it is up to us to make this come alive in our hearts and in our lives. That's walking in faith. To the point that we'll, Christ will be alive in us. And it won't be any longer I that live. But it'll be Christ. It don't have to be me. You can reckon yourselves to be dead with Christ. When he went to Calvary, he said, there I went. Satan, what are you doing? I I died back there at Calvary. I paid that sin debt through Jesus Christ. I've went down into hell. But praise God, I didn't stay there. Praise God, I can't. He said you can liken yourself to be dead. And you can also liken yourself to be alive in Christ. This thing is about life. Came forth out from the grave. That's why he said that he predestinated according to foreknowledge. Why? Because he's seen me in Christ. He's seen me in Christ. He's seen us in Christ Jesus. So we see that God spoke to us in time past through the prophets. He was. I was like that eagle. They could see. And God used that because the Messiah was coming. The prophesy about the things to come. But what about walking in the things that are here? Amen. What about walking in the things that are here? See, we had the priests. We had the prophets. We had all those men in the Old Testament. See, they couldn't bring us but so far. Even John. God said, here it is, John, the greatest. He said, born among women. Here he was, the one that introduced the Messiah. Said, even John. He said, those that are least in the kingdom is greater than John. Those that are born. See why? There's been a way made now. They talked about going beyond the veil. They talked about where we at. But we're there. We are walking in, we're the ones that are walking and living in Canaan land. We're those that are dwelling in heavenly places. He said, in these last days spoken unto us by his son. 
who has appointed heir over all things. All things are his. They were made by him, for him. Without him was nothing made that was made. And then he come along and he said, you know what? We have an inheritance. Join heirs with Christ. Amen. What's that make us? Heir to all things. Heir to all things. See, God has done so much. See, where are we at? Think about even that process. See, there's a process, and we think about time, and someone said time was to keep everything from happening at once. But that was for our tutoring. We talk about the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. There was. But yet, that didn't come to light until Calvary. We hear Paul and them speak about the change. See, that's to come to light. We believe it could be in our day. It's right here. Has it taken place? It's taken place in the mind of God. In the mind of God, it's taken place. But see, it hasn't been manifested. That's the way these things are. And it's the same way it is. Predestination. See, he predestinated according to foreknowledge. He knew what you would do. And that's what he did according to. Some people take these things. They misconstrue it. They take these things and say, well, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm a predestinated son of God. I say so many times, they may be. But they haven't recognized it. Because when you recognize it, that is when you're born again of the Spirit of Christ and you will not continue in sin. It will change your life. It will change your life. So as long as I hear people saying that, I say they haven't recognized. They haven't come to understand. They haven't recognized that. See, that foreknowledge wasn't your foreknowledge. It was His. See, you don't know what tomorrow holds. He does. See, if you would have knew, there's a lot of mistakes you made you probably could have avoided. But you didn't know that. So we ended up blundering in and we made a lot of mistakes. A lot of things we could have avoided. See, how do we walk now? We walk by faith and not by sight. What is that? That faith in the Word of God. It says, if you'll do these things, you'll not fall. If you'll follow the instructions, Peter lays it out there, then you won't fall. We walk in the faith of Jesus Christ that His love, God's love, that nothing can separate us. Not, from, not my love for Him, but His love for me. Sometimes, you know what? We might get weak. Sometimes we stumble. Sometimes our love, it waxes cold. The Bible says in the last days, the love of many wax cold. Sometimes we go slack in our walk with Christ. Where are we at? He's speaking through his son. What is it? The revelation of Christ. We believe that the revelation of Christ is the coming of the Lord. We're talking about that a little bit. Last night discussing some things. How that, even in Enoch's time, the king asked, well, what did he see? It would have had to have been the revelation of Christ. He said he saw the Lord returning with ten thousands of his saints. Oh, Enoch was out of here. Enoch was out of here and what did it leave? Destruction. Peter said, you're the people upon whom the end of the world has come. Where are we at today? We can still say, today, you're the people upon the end of the world have come. Right, <coughs> See, where are the people? See, the question I would leave with you today, 
Who do men say that I am? You asked yourself that question. Talking about that as to the funeral, you know. Oh, we may come and but Jimmy said they say good things or bad things. Usually they say good things or nothing. <laughs> we try to avoid the bad things. Do you know, really, they say you're writing your own script. You're writing your song. You are the epistle that people are reading. What do they see? See, if we're members in particular of the body of Christ, Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. He said, but I'm going away. What did he say? He said, you're going to be the light of the world. You're going to be the light of the world. He's wanting to operate through you and me. The same way that God worked through Jesus Christ, as he worked in, through that human bodily Temple he wants to work the same way through you and I. He wants to work the same way. Will we allow him? Will we let him? See, will we let him? It depends on our walk. It depends on our interest. See, and it said that Enoch walked with God. He walked with God. It was a daily thing. It wasn't anything that was important to Enoch. It paid off. It paid off. And I believe God is stirring the hearts of his people. Oh, it might be a little flock. There might be a few here and there might be a few over there. there might be some across town, the next state. Across the seas and the other countries. Maybe just a few. He said, but fear not, little flock. It's your Father's good pleasure to give unto you the kingdom. He said, fear there be that find it. Straight is the gate, narrow is the way. It's not this big picture that's being painted. Straight is the gate, narrow is the way. Few there be that find it. Broad is the way to destruction. Many go therein. See, where are we at? What is my life saying? What is your life saying? What is my walk with Christ? When I speak, is it Christ speaking? Is it Christ speaking? As we do the things in our everyday activity. People see Christ. This is what's important. This is what matters. Because God, He's, he's wanting to speak. When we get to the place we realize this, then our words become weighty. They become powerful. We can begin to speak. How powerful is it? Well, He said that the word is nigh thee even in thy mouth. To the point of eternal life. That's pretty powerful. By just simply accepting Jesus Christ. Who do men say that I am? Peter got a revelation. Peter got a revelation. See, he wasn't building a church on Peter. He was building a church on the revelation of Jesus Christ. And that's what it's continued by and that's what is going to bring it to a consummation even in this last day. Because even Jesus Christ himself had said that he would set until his enemies be made his footstools. He said there's one enemy, the last to be conquered. Oh, was it conquered at Calvary? It was. It was. But what's happened is coming to light. 
See, it took place. Jesus said it is finished. He took care of all of it. It's just like Jesus Christ died for your sins. John said, the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world. He took away your sin. But you didn't reap benefit until you said, I accept. I accept what Jesus Christ has done. That's when it came alive in your heart. And it said, to as many as were foreordained, believed. Believed. Have you believed? Say, have we believed the word of God? Simply believing, taking it by faith, that it is so. And he says just what he meant. Means what he says, and he says what he means. Laid it all out there. It's up to us. Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He looked beyond that veil. He didn't stop with, well, I know your mama. We know your dad, your, your earthly, wasn't his father, was it? Might have been his daddy, but he wasn't his father. We knew who his brothers and sisters were. I could have been his Earlier part of Matthew went back through his natural lineage. All the way back. Look beyond the veil. See, Jesus didn't say, who do men say that I the Son of God am? Said, who do men say I the Son of Man? What does he say? See, what is it? There is. Spirit body, there's something there. There's a change that's taking place. They become just like Jesus. He walked up there on the Mount of Transfiguration and appeared in glory. Walked over there, met the disciples, and just walked right through the wall. There wasn't any obstacles. There was nothing too great. See, I believe that's what we're coming to. I believe we're coming to a place that there's not going to be any obstacles that's going to be able to hold us back. I believe we're going to be able to just walk through the wall. Oh, David, he leaped over a wall, ran through a tree. We won't even have to jump over. I believe that's where we're headed. I believe that. It's a part of that change. Sing that song to be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. See, what does that really mean? What does that really mean? Let's go study the life of Christ. Let's go study a little bit. Follow it a little bit. See what it's like. See, that's what it's all about. Being like Him. Being like the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we stand together? To be like the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe we can come to the place that just be like him, but it will be him living. We won't be just mimicking. I'm talking about the message. The word, you know, we can repeat it. We can say the right things, but it makes a difference when it begins to come alive in our heart. It begins to come alive. It becomes a reality. You know? I don't know about you, but I want this thing to become more and more alive. Amen. You know, I'm not satisfied with where I'm at. I'm satisfied with Jesus, but I'm not satisfied with where I'm at. 
I got, I got some more hills to climb. Man, I've got some more battles to fight. Some more victories to win. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we just look at the battles. Man, I've got some victories to win. Amen. Amen. we got some victories to win. Let's sing a chorus together. Let you go. Let's just sing that chorus to be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. To be like honor alone. light of God is changing us. That life is the light of men. And up there sitting at the back of the funeral home yesterday and light was shining through and the windows and, and as they would stand up there the different ones or pass by you could see the shadow on the wall. There was a bright area where the window was kind of putting there. And You know as I looked at that I could tell by that shadow who was who was there. I, I, I could tell. If I knew him, I could tell by the shape there. I could tell who it was. But I tell you, it's a whole lot different. When you're looking at the shadow on you than looking at the real thing. The Bible says we look through a glass darkly. You know, we're coming to a place that glass darkly is being moved. That veil, he said, we come to a place we can see face to face. When we, you know, 
Someone mentioned this. I heard a minister mention it. He said, you know, we spend so much time talking about what we see in the mirror. Talking about that old man, you know, and I, I believe we got to recognize that. I believe we got to recognize that when we look in that mirror, there's that, there's that man of sin. There's that man of uh, that, that they're antichrist. There's that man that's got to be done away with. Amen. But it comes to a point and a place that we make that transition. We're being born of the Holy Spirit that we look in that mirror and we're not seeing that man of sin anymore. Amen. We begin to see the unveiled Christ. We begin to see the image of the Son of God. Amen. And that's what we're looking forward to. You know, not this old man of sin, but we get begin to look in there and we're not seeing that. And I can look in here and, and, and begin to say, Lord, I, I don't just see a, a woman at the well, but I, I, and I don't just see that there man on the wayside, but I, I can begin to see the, the living Son of God. I, I can begin to declare, even as Jesus did, that I am the resurrection and I am the life. You say, how can we say that? Through Christ Jesus, because it's it's not us, but it is Christ. And it, it's that same spirit that's speaking today. It's that same trump of God that is beginning to sound to call us up out of the graves. And I think as Ezekiel stood there and he began to prophesy over the valley of dry bones, I look around at this generation and I see a lot of people that grew up in the church with me, that went to church with us, that go back to the early 70s, and I see a valley of dry bones. But we're going to begin to prophesy. We're going to keep Keep on preaching, and we're going to begin to proclaim that the resurrection of Christ is here. We're going to call him out of the grave. Amen. And we're going to begin to speak to those four winds and tell them to come across there and bring some breath of the Holy Ghost on the inside. Amen. Not just a religious experience, but being filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. I'm not giving up. I'm not turning back. I'm moving forward. Hey, Amen. We're moving forward. Because I do believe that I'm a child of the resurrection. Hey, Amen. I believe there's some children of the resurrection. I believe there's some that need to be called out, that need to awaken unto righteousness and put on their beautiful garments. Hey, Amen. You need to hear that voice of the eagle cry. Hey, Amen. To hear that turtle dove crawling in the land. Amen. Cooing to its mate. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe that that trump of God. Amen. Somebody's waiting on the old Gabriel to step out there and blow a big old horn. Oh, I tell you what, if you got ears to hear what the Spirit's saying, you can hear that there's a horn being blown. You can hear that there's a trumpet that's being lifted up, and you can hear you got God coming back with a shout. Hallelujah. He's coming back with a shout. Hallelujah. Oh, and he said he quickens. I mean, well, he brings life. Oh, sometimes you can feel dead, but all of a sudden, here comes that breeze of the Holy Ghost. Just like it was on the day of Pentecost. As they stood up there, here they had been discouraged, they had been afraid, but all of a sudden, as they stand in there in one mind, one accord, all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost came in there. It shook the place, and the, and the thing began to move, and the Holy Ghost fell. Oh, they come out of there shouting to victory. Amen. Amen. They went about preaching the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's the only message there is. Amen. Is the resurrection. It's the resurrection. Oh, hallelujah. I don't mean to get excited, but I can. Maybe I do mean to get excited. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Coming out of them grave clothes. Amen. Amen. Getting past the shadows. Amen. Not just a silhouette anymore. Amen. Amen. But the light of the glory of his unveiled face. Oh, that's what's changing us. Changing us from glory to glory. Oh, as you see more of the Spirit of God, that word comes alive. You see, God is moving, he's moving, he's moving. God's not dead, he's still alive. Amen. I'm glad God's not dead. He's still alive. Amen. Can we sing that chorus? What a mighty God we serve. Amen. What a mighty God we serve.
Appreciate the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Don't forget we have Bible study this afternoon at 5 o'clock. I think there's some music practice beginning at 3. So anyhow, come back expecting something. Amen. We've had a good time in these Bible studies. And uh, just, we just love growing in, grace, growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Talking about the good things of God. Talking about the good things. Let's just sing that chorus one more time. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God.